Okay, so in the last video, I guess we'll call that video part one, we went over the Ryzen R5 1600X. And basically, in that video, I was pointing out that that chip is pretty pointless to overclock. You can just pretty much run it at stock in a little B350 board and get the most potential out of it. The 1600, however, is a 100%, well, let's call it a 75% opposite, at least in this board, because you're not going to get the max potential out of these six core chips in a little B350. Unfortunately, the VRMs just can't handle it. I only recommend 1.30 volts max for 24 seven use in a B350 board. Maybe they'll make better ones later on down the line, but with the current offerings, 1.30, it's pushing it. I'm trying to keep the VRM temps under 70C with no cooling on the VRM whatsoever. So let's go over this real quick. These are the AMD Ryzen chips. And the ones that we are working with right now is a Ryzen 5 1600X the Ryzen 5 1600. Now in the last video we went over the fact that this chip has a default clock of 3.6. Then you have CPB or performance boost which will push that up to 3.7. We only were able to get 3.8 out of it at 1.3 volts and in order to do so we had to sacrifice turbo. So this chip, drop it in, leave it at stock. That's the best way to run this chip. Maybe even undervolt it. The 1600, however, is a totally different animal. This thing runs at a 3.2 gig clock, base clock. It has a 3.6 turbo, which, you know, it's only going to apply to one core. And CPB will boost it up to, I think, 3.3 or 3.4. So... On this chip, my particular chip, my VID is, let me move this, my VID is, well actually it's one right there, that's my VID of this chip. With CPB and C states off, it's a 1.237 chip, so I am giving it about 0.63 volts, 0.63. I'm running at 1.3 these are the voltages you should be paying attention to. Those are my socket voltages. This thing will decide to focus at some point in time. Hello, focus. 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 There we go. So, 1.312. 1.312 is the peak. 1.301 is the average. The SOC is run by XMP in the BIOS, so I just left that alone. As you can see, we're running Prime. Now, with these chips, like I've said in the past, you can usually... I, I found the way to not necessarily bend them, but, but test them. Um, in Cinebench, usually whatever I can get in Cinebench, I have to drop 100 megahertz. Give or take, plus or minus 20... 5 megahertz. You can pretty much just dial them in like that and run prime and they just rip right through it. Things are stable. As you can see, I've got the memory allocated pretty high. 3200 memory. I'm just really loving this board. No matter what chip I throw into it, no matter how bad the IMC, it's just running. So, this chip is worth overclocking. It overclocks. It's doing 3750. It's actually 100 meg 150 megahertz or almost 150 megahertz over the possible turbo speed. It's worth overclocking. This is the chip for the overclocker. The 1600X is the chip for the average Joe that just wants to plug their system in and play. This is the chip you should be looking for if you're interested in the 6 core. Now, granted, silicon's not the same. I don't think this is a good sample. 
the sample in a X370 board that won't melt its VRM would probably only be a 3850 chip. I'd be hard pressed to be getting 3.9 out of it at 1.40 at the socket. So I don't think it's a stellar sample. So you're probably going to see similar in the real world. Uh, if you just go buy a chip and play the silicon lottery. It's only 50 megahertz lower than what I was getting on my 1600X. So, I mean, how much is it, is it, is it worth the extra, what was it? Is it worth the extra $30 for 50 megahertz? You be the judge on that. I like this chip. I like any chip that I can take and I can overclock. I just took this chip, and 3.2 gig chip, and I got 550 megahertz out of it. Who can complain about that? Um, let's do some scores, and we'll show you what the variance is, once again, like we did with the other chip, from my overclock settings to a stock default setting. So let's close all this out. By the way, this chip is running, actually ran... Let's see the temp. It actually ran 1C higher than my 1600X. It could be a mount, but I don't think it is. It's actually ramping my fan up, so it's a little bit hotter chip. Slightly hotter. Silicon lottery. Same voltage. So let's close all this out of here. Give this thing the benefit of the doubt. And we're going to run Cinebench and then we'll run Pi. So the score is 12.58. And then we'll run pi. Once again, I am not running 32 meg because it just takes too long. I'm just going to run a one meg. It should give us a difference So, it gave us a score of 11.263. Now we are going to reboot, and we're going to run the chip at the stock frequency with CPB enabled and turbo enabled. Hopefully they are not deciding to do an update on me. That would be one hell of a time for them to download an update and install it on me. In the middle of a video, Gotta love Windows 10.
I have update shut off. I am probably going to have to do this video all over again just because of Microsoft. Thank you, Microsoft. And you wonder why my version of Windows 10 is not activated. Screw them. Hopefully it didn't wreck my OS. I'm not dealing with that today. Hopefully the system will actually boot. <sighs> These are the retry counts for 3200 memory. This is normal on Ryzen, so. All right, so. A. <coughs> Auto. 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 Make sure everything is set properly. Let's pray that Microsoft got stopped. All right, so now we have Let's see. Now we have 3692, it's a turbo boost with 3393 which is the CPB kicking in. Sure that we shut off everything and do our run again. So 1156, so we lost 130 points running the 1600 at stock. So that's a pretty significant gain, 130 points. I think we saw in the, the 1600X, there was like a 20 point gap. Not worth it. This chip, definitely worth it. Let's see what uh, comes out with Pi.
So we had 11.2 at the overclocked 1600 settings, and we have a 12.12. It's almost a complete second. It's like 0.90 seconds slower. So once again, running the 1600 at stock does not make sense if you can get the CPU to overclock beyond the turbo frequency, which is 3.6, it makes a lot more sense. And this is the chip that you want to use. It just makes sense. It's the chip that you want for overclocking. The voltage jumps on these things. 1.55 is what it says for the VID now. But it's saying that we've only gone up to... I don't know. The V core jumped up to 1.356. I've also got the power states enabled. So here it's saying we went down to 0392, 1.341 peak. So I was running 0 0.50 under. This one's saying 1.362 peak though. It was still running underneath. But I did not have... If you do a P-State overclock, you can probably get even lower voltage and lower power usage. I just... I don't even know if this board has it. So, that pretty much sums up my take on AMD's R5 6-core chips. R5 1600, overclock, thumbs up. R1600X for overclockers... Thumbs down. It's just not, it doesn't make sense. Buy it, stick it in, run it at stock, be happy. Want to overclock and tune? Buy the 1600 and have fun. Anyway, that wraps up my personal take on the R5 6 cores. I am going to move on to the R5 4 cores next. See you next time.